WWE turns down CM Punk plus Velveteen Dream debunks NXT comeback rumors and a classic TNA gimmick match is returning at Bound for Glory. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. Look in my eyes, what do you know? No, you don't. No, not a thing. Stop it, stop thinking about it. Uh, punk plans, greatly exaggerated. That is according to Dave Meltzer. Yeah, he shared an update on the situation on a recent edition of the Wrestling Observer Radio, which might put all of these rumors to bed. He said he wanted to go there, CM Punk, and the decision was a no. It can always change, and it was brought up to me like, there's no such thing as no forever, but it's a no for now. Mm. Uh, that's the decision that was made, Melter goes on to say. It's Vince's decision, Vince, Nick Khan, Paul Levesque, and obviously they decided that the negatives outweighed the positives, and you can't argue with that. It could always change, and it was made very clear to me if WWE's business went down, they know it's a card they could play. But is it worth it? And how bad is business going to go down, really? Yeah, uh, Fightful also weighed in. They'd spoken on a punk return recently, saying the conversations weren't currently happening as had previously been reported. Uh, Fightful uh, have addressed some of the subtle CM Punk teasers we've seen on TV recently, such as Corey Graves' line on commentary about the devil and obviously Nakamura hitting the GTS as well. Uh, the sources say that most of these are not cleared beforehand and it might just be the wrestlers doing it themselves, with the WWE talent saying they might even be doing it to get under punk skin leave him alone <laughs> leave him alone yeah, man. <laughs> it's the yeah so i i wonder whether in the in the wake of all of this today there may be a, a strongly worded email going round to whoever is doing a gts on monday night raw could you please stop we're not naming names <laughs> But don't do it. It um, only upsets Kenta. House of Wrestling have also... Nick Houseman obviously, has reported quite closely on CM Punk in recent times. Mm -hmm. uh, House of Wrestling added, We spoke with a source in CM Punk's camp that heavily gave us the impression that the two sides were no longer in talks about a return. Uh, it was noted to Nick Houseman that WWE is not in a place where they need to pay for a top star like CM Punk to come in. And for his part, it sounds as though Punk felt that the whole stigma around him and other negative connotations would be erased with time. And he sees how a return to WWE, if done correctly, could be a no-brainer. But at the moment, it sounds like the two sides are quite far apart. Anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation, Absolutely. as we all know. And, and genuinely, I do think if it's something that doesn't happen immediately, I think it's something that could happen at some point. Yeah, Punk was always the person who, it's always, there's always been people in the past where it's been like, throughout WWE's history, where it's like, they will never return. The bridges have been too burned. Sam Martino, Bret Hart, they always ended up coming back in some form or another, whether it be at the Hall of Fame, on screen. It, it really does seem like in wrestling, never say never. Basically. Never say never. Well, there's one that we probably will say never to. Uh, which we'll discuss here. Right? Yes, well. So um, this was interesting. So yesterday, a rumor started doing the rounds regarding Velveteen Dream. Uh, he's been very much uh, removed as persona non grata from WWE and wrestling in general for many years now. Uh, and a rumor circulated that he'd been spotted in the Performance Center getting ready for a WWE comeback. Five for Select reported a short while later saying that no one, and none of his WWE sources rather, had seen seen or heard anything about Patrick Clark, aka Velveteen Dream, returning to WWE, nor had anybody seen him at the Performance Center. They added, when speaking to a higher up in WWE, they stated that they had no interest in re-signing Patrick Clark slash Velveteen Dream at this time, and something very shocking would have to take place for something like that to happen. Yeah. So much so were these rumors mm. that Patrick Clark himself took to social media to re to debunk them. Yes, he was on Instagram by the end of the same night to refute any claims that he and WWE were coming to terms on a possible return. He said, I'm not in a rehabilitation facility, which had been rumored, nor have I visited Orlando, Florida, the Performance Center, or any WWE events or facilities. So he's really put that to bed. I remember in the Fightful Select report, they had the caveat that like nobody's seen him at the Performance Center, but it was pointed out to us that there are two buildings. It could have just been that he was totally in the other building. But no, he himself there has denied that he was in Orlando at all. So. He goes on to say, I encourage all wrestling media and platforms to highlight the women and men who put together awesome weekly television and not waste time publishing and pushing fake narratives and fake news about me. I haven't contributed anything to your line of entertainment 
entertainment in years. Please do better and use your platforms to showcase the bright and prominent future that is professional wrestling. Well, there we go then. Uh, yeah. that, that puts to bed anything that you might read about a, a Velveteen Dream comeback there. Uh, on the podcast feed today, brand new episode of Desert Island Grabs. Mm. Loved a chat that I had with former 205 Live commentator Johnny LaQuasto. Mm. Uh, Johnny was brought in so just before the pandemic. He did lots of stuff. Uh, he helped get a lot of people ready to do commentary within WWE after his uh, runs at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and such like that. And he um, he's a stand-up comic in his own right as well. He's got a brand new special out called Saudi Stepdad, which is uh, a really wonderful watch. It's about 45 minutes long on YouTube. It's worth checking out for you right now. So we talk all about that. We talk about his time in WWE as, as it comparatively short and sweet as it was. And of course, he picks his three favorite wrestling matches to watch on a desert island as well. Also, he tells me, you know, when, when the world was shutting down mm. for the pandemic, uh, he did something that I don't think anybody else has done. Just decided to drive to the Niagara Falls with Hurricane Helms. Oh, that's nice. Had a lovely little day yeah. out. Might as well. Why, why not? The world's shutting down. Let's do something like go to Niagara Falls. <laughs> uh, that's on the podcast feed. If you're a Patreon, you can watch the video version of that as well as a thank you for supporting us. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Let's end with some TNA flavored goodness from Impact Wrestling and a classic gimmick match from the TNA era that's coming back for Bound for Glory. Absolutely. And Tom, I'm excited because it's the Monsters Ball oh, match. Oh, come on. It was announced last night that Rhino, Steve Macklin, PCO, and Moose, all big boys, big will boys. be competing in a Monsters Ball match. If you didn't if you if you're unfamiliar perhaps with the history of TNA or, or Impact Wrestling as it's now known, uh, it was a classic TNA gimmick match that makes annual returns to the company. The rules are so kayfabe, it's delicious. <laughs> All the competitors are put in solitary confinement for 24 hours before the match, meaning that once they get to the ring, they're going to be wild and unhinged. What, what could possibly happen? <laughs> See, the thing is... There'll be I, a lot of weapons. I'd be awful in that Monsters Ball match. Like, you're going to put you in solitary confinement for 24 hours, no food, no water. I'd come out, I'd just be really sad. I'd be so I'd tired. I'd be crying, yeah. I'd be hungry. <laughs> yeah. I just, I wouldn't want to... Last thing I'd want to do is have a fight with I'd, Rhino and Moose. I'd head to the ring on Uber Eats. <laughs> 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 All right, book it. <laughs> uh, also confirmed for Bound for Glory, which is a week on Saturday. The Call Your Shot Gauntlet's coming back. Mm. We had a memorable Bound for Glory moment born from that when Moose won the Call Your Shot Gauntlet. And then later on the night, as Josh Alexander celebrated winning the Impact title yes. with his wife and family. Uh, here's Moose to ruin everything. Absolutely. It was a great moment. Um, One the, of them's coming out. The tag titles are also on the line as the Rascals defend against the team of Ace Austin and Chris Bay. The best women's tag team in the West world right now, MK Ultra, mm. Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich are facing Diana Perrazzo and Tasha Steele for the knockouts tag titles. That's a big match. That's a massive match. Mm -hmm. that uh, Chris Sabin will defend the X Division title against Kenta. That's a big one. Mm. Uh, the knockouts title on the line, Trinity are get facing the woman that never lost the belt which is Mickey James. Uh, will Ospreay will take on Speedball Mike Bailey. Ospreay did a promo on Twitter while he was doing his kitchen. Did. Did you see that? He's just got... He's just got the wrestling on on the telly and he's like, what well, am I? I just do my kitchen. So I'll he's the, art, the art of the multitask. <laughs> yeah. Although I didn't see him put up one single unit or anything. <laughs> he's just there with a pen making notes. And then he's like, oh, you've caught me doing my new kitchen. <laughs> probably got a bloke round doing it in a probably. <laughs> Amazing. It's probably Mike Bailey. <laughs> and for the world title, Alex Shelley, Josh Alexander in the main event. Mm. That is bound for glory ahead of the UK Invasion Tour. Oh, Come on. Exciting. Times. Uh, end of October, Glasgow, Newcastle for Turning Point, and two nights in Coventry as well. Don't know whether you've heard. Oh, I might have heard. I don't know you've heard. Certain ring announcer for um, the Newcastle event. There. May or may not be ring announcing for Newcastle and both nights oh, in Coventry. Wow. So if you're coming along, come say hi. It's going to be wonderful. I'm going to that Newcastle one. I am absolutely buzzing for it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk, actually, Joe Hendry and I talk about it on a brand new episode of his YouTube show on Impact Wrestling's channel, Food Fight. Oh, lovely. That should be, I think, on online. I think that's coming out today. So look out for me and Joe Hendry uh, eating a staple Newcastle diet. Oh, no. Of Greg's. Yeah. Yeah. Whilst sharing some uh, some stories and stuff. That'll be on the Impact Wrestling YouTube channel. But for the latest wrestling news throughout the day, of course, you can check out cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.